Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's episode of The Things You May Have Missed in Elden Ring, we're covering Southern Kaled. Initially, I was hoping to also cover Aeonia Swamp right in the centre as part of this video, but there's quite a lot in Southern Kaled and this took way longer than I expected, so we'll come back and do the swamp and obviously the rest of Kaled in later videos. If you'd like to see more top tier Elden Ring gameplay and guides, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Along with this Things You Missed series, we're also going to be starting up a complete overview of all the best weapons in the game for any type of build. And the first video coming up in a few days will be looking at faith weapons. We'll be starting today at the Kaled Highway South site of Grace. And if you head pretty much directly southwest, in no time at all you'll come to one of these broken cut monuments and you can grab yourself some starlight shards. Make sure you've rested and passed the time until it's night. The next thing we're going to do is head east and along this main road you'll come across a knight's cavalry. Be very careful of the decaying dragon I aggro here. We'll be revisiting him in a later tip but I'm going to avoid him for now because he's probably the toughest boss we've come up against in the game so far. So scooch around him and we'll go and start beating up the knight's cavalry. He packs a punch compared to the others we've fought so far but uses the exact same moveset so you should have no problem with him. Then head south here where I've just marked on the map and we can grab the site of grace at the Cathedral of Dragon Communion and we'll talk about this area in the next tip. Here you'll find another altar of Dragon Communion just like the one in Limgrave except this one is far better because it's where you can learn all dragon spells. You'll see here there's a base version of six different dragon abilities and as you defeat specific dragons you will earn a super mega upgraded version of that spell. So as I've just shown, you've got the base dragon fire, and then when you beat flying dragon Agheel back in Limgrave, you'll get Agheel's flame. And the same applies for all of the other spells you see here. So don't waste dragon hearts on the base versions. Wait until you've killed the dragons and then buy the upgraded version. Talking of dragon incantations, we're just about to go and attempt to beat the dragon that will drop the upgraded version of Rotten Breath. This decaying dragon is an absolute monster and Fucked me up a couple of times. I ended up having to get a bit cheesy with him in the end. For the most part, when he's using his melee attacks, he's no more difficult than any other dragon, except for the fact that he has a tremendously large health bar. Where he really gets you is with all of his Scarlet Rotten. There is one in particular that sprays a huge, huge area all around him, and if you don't run away a fair distance, you are just gonna die. But when you do manage to beat him through whatever tactic you wish to employ, you'll then be able to get the upgraded version of Rotten Breath. As you see at the Dragon Communion Altar here. I very nearly forgot to call out a cookbook just then as well. Literally right next to the altar, within the corpse of this dragon here, you can grab the Ancient Dragon Apostles Cookbook 3. And with that dragon dead and that cookbook claimed, we can now move on to the next tip. The next thing we're going to do is head west of the Dragon Communion Church and right over to the cliff edge here, you'll see a gravesite with a load of tombs. As you're looting the golden runes and clearing out the zombies, one of the giant zombie troll dudes will spawn and once you take him out, you'll be rewarded with a larval tier. As you probably know by now, but just in case you didn't, these items are used when speaking to Renala to respec your character. Once you've done grabbing all the loot, head back to the church and we'll continue on east. Just where I've placed the marker on the map here, head down cliff after cliff after cliff, making sure you don't fall too far and kill yourself. And then when you get all the way to the bottom, you can take out this scarab and get a somber smithing stone 4. And then once you've dealt with the burb, you'll come to the entrance to the Kaelid catacombs. So I'll meet you inside and we'll go through it together. This is definitely one of the most straightforward caves in the game and you'll see me just sprinting past most enemies because I really couldn't be asked to deal with all the scarlet rot pools and the scarlet rot spewing flowers and the bloody giant Miranda blooms. <laughs> so as you hop down these stairs, swing round and you can take out this illusionary wall and you'll get some Miranda sprout ashes and two grave glove wart five. That honestly is the only thing of note. Just keep running through, grabbing all the flowers, and then when you get to the boss door in front of you, do a 180, and that's another illusionary wall that you can smash. 
and in there is the lever to open the path to the boss. Once you get to the boss, you'll find it's a cemetery shade. Fuck his shit up. And you'll get the spirit ashes for the kindred of rot. So with two more spirit ashes under our belt, we'll head back out and on to the next tip. The last tip for this area ended up being about six or seven tips in one. <laughs> so this is going to be a long one. And when it comes to the actual chapters in the YouTube video, I might break it down a bit for you. But head along where I'm coming here and you can grab yourself a golden seed off this tree. Run a little bit further up and then in this ravine it will be the windy crystal tier. And the windy crystal tier increases the effectiveness of your dodge rolls for a time. And then once I've finally managed to deal with these fucking birds, slightly to the east of me where I've got the number three marker on the map, you'll see a merchant that you can go and speak to. You can grab the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 15 off of him, and that lets you craft rot bone arrows and bolts. There's also a stone sword key, crafted pot, an armor set, and a note, most of which really isn't worth it, but I'm a completionist, so I buy everything. Once you're done there, you can run to the northeast and find yourself a site of grace. And now I fail again and again and again, burning through all of my rune arcs trying to kill this death right bird. After the first, I just, I don't know what went wrong. I don't know what happened. I, I just lost all skill. I just made mistake after mistake. And, oh God, I'm probably gonna end up cutting out most of the, most of the footage for you because it was agonizing. Oh, it was horrible. And after literally 20 minutes and like six or seven deaths of trying to kill him, I finally just end up cheesing him from this tree with fucking Loretta's great bow. And when you kill him, you get a good amount of runes. You get like 15,000 runes and then you also get the death's poker weapon. Now we're going to head all the way to the south coast and we'll be just across the bridge from Redmain Castle. On the way there, I encounter one of them lion wolf things that I end up mostly cheesing to death. Once he dies, he gives you his usual loot of a somber smithing stone for beast blood and fangs, and then you can grab some more beast blood from the corpse that was right by him. Now, an interesting little tidbit for you here. As you're running down to this final camp that we're going to end the video at, hit all of the giant dogs on your way down, and they'll aggro on the knights in the area. Just hit them all once to aggro them, and then keep running past. And whilst you're exploring the next area, this huge fight is going on, and you're getting loads of free souls for it. But it's a great way to do a bit of passive leveling up. Once you've got to the camp, head out towards the west, and on the top of this little hill is a scarab. Then we'll head back into the camp and up the ladders to grab the Arrows Sting Talisman. And last but not least, you can now activate the Sight of Grace. And that sets us up exactly where we need to be for Redmain Castle. And finally, I just want to finish up the video by saying thank you so much to every single person here right now. The support that this channel has continued to receive recently has been absolutely phenomenal. And I just hope that I can continue to consistently deliver you great content that's not just informative but also entertaining that's the bit i find the most fun i love putting a smile on your face and if you can learn something in the process fucking amazing yes so have an absolutely fantastic day and i will see you in the next video bye bye